I have selected seven important highlights of this budget, which I will place before you. As I said, you can't look at India today in isolation. You have to look at it in the international context. Events occurring somewhere else in the world affects India, its economy, its fluctuation rates, and therefore, international law has been given a lot of importance. But I will touch just one provision which I think is important. There are seven highlights. The first highlight of the budget, according to me, is the provision consisting of Section 90 and 90A of the Act. Section 90 deals with double taxation agreements entered by India with various countries and specialized institutions. 90A talks about double taxation agreements, approvals, acceptance by the government with specialized institutions. Let me give you a background before I come to the provision. There is a circular issued by CBDT, the Central Board of Direct Taxes, being circular number 789, dated 13th April 2000. Under that certificate, under that uh, circular, it is stipulated that any non-resident, if he produces a tax residency certificate, TRC, of that country, that certificate is conclusive proof to prove that he is the resident of that particular country. This circular was challenged in the Supreme Court in the case of Azadi Andolan Bachao. In 2003, the Supreme Court in Azadi Andolan Bachao 263 ITR page 706 came to the conclusion after analyzing international law, the taxation laws, the various treaties, it came to the conclusion that the circular issued by CBDT 789 dated 13th April 2000 is valid and a tax residency certificate has to be given its due weightage and importance. Now, in order to support the judgment, last year, in the Income Tax Act, amendment was carried, whereby approval was given to the tax residency certificate in the section, and above all, the important point is, a format was also prescribed. They had to fill the format prescribing the details of residency. And the tax residency certificate gave full importance. In this budget, the finance minister has introduced an amendment to the section which says, the relevance words are that the tax residency certificate, quote, is necessary but not a sufficient condition. I am on the words necessary but not a sufficient condition. What is the implication? The implication is that you have to produce a tax residency certificate. It is necessary. But having given the certificate, the assessing officer may turn around and tell you, it is not sufficient condition. I have got the powers to sit in judgment and decide whether the tax residency certificate issued in the format prescribed last year is valid or not. And whether you have chosen that particular residence for tax evasion or for getting treaty benefit or for treaty shopping. Please note that Circular 789 has not been withdrawn by the CBDT. It still stands today. 
There are umpteen number of cases starting from Elderman's case 80 to ITR onwards which says that a circular issued by the CBDT is binding on the income tax officer. So how is the income tax officer to act? Is he to go by the certificate? Is he to go by the amendment? And how does it proceed? Further, it is not in the act, but in the finance minister's speech, he talks about beneficial ownership. Historically, India has been a country where dual ownership has always been in doubt. And it is a country where form prevails over the substance. Based on all these points, Recently, the finance minister said that he would narrow it down. But I think once a judgment is given by the Supreme Court, there is a circular by CBDT, the same should be followed, and this kind of an amendment should not be brought or encouraged. Second, I come to some miscellaneous four provisions which I think some of them are very good, some of them are a little difficult. The first provision is in section 139. Very good provision. See, unlike Customs and Excise Act, in Income Tax Act, you can file a return without payment of taxes. You can even file a return, pay the taxes and not pay the self-assessment tax. Now, the law says that if you have not paid the taxes, number one, you are liable to interest, you are liable to penalty, and you have no right of appeal correctly. Now, a great concession has been given. The law says now that a return which is unaccompanied by taxes is a defective return. Once a defective return, it means it is a curable defect. The officer will issue notice to you and within 15 days, if you have not paid the taxes, if you pay the taxes along with interest, etc., it is a curable defect and thus the return thereafter could be processed. Good, it is in line with the decision of Ahmedabad Tribunal, various other tribunals and two high courts including Punjab and Haryana. So good uh, amendment, I think benefit should be taken on this count. The second amendment which I wish to take is in section 179. It deals with private limited companies. Though the amendment is simple, but it has a lot of other ramifications and implications. You see, for a private limited company, the position is, if a private limited company is unable to pay its dues and liabilities and outstanding amounts, then the directors of the private limited company which is unlisted, are personally held liable under section 179. Now there the words were, they are liable for tax due. Issues arose in the court as to what is the interpretation of the word tax due. And the courts had said that it is the quantum tax, sometimes the interest, there was differences, but the position was it contemplated the quantum of tax. Now the amendment has been brought which says that tax due means tax plus interest plus penalty plus any other sums due and outstanding. So the tax due has now got a vast implication to cover within its basket the totality, including interest, penalty, and other amounts. It's a dangerous provision. 
but look at the repercussion from a different angle in a stay application before the assessing officer and various authorities including the tribunal and the high court normally the correct position was that we argue that you give us a stay and if it is say 1 lakh of rupees 25% or 50% of the tax amount with this amendment though it is in 179 what i am just thinking about is the larger spectrum that would hit is in stay application where the assessing officer can turn round and say that okay i may not consider the quantum of tax including interest and penalty if at all so that is an area of concern in stay applications though i'm sure the high court would take a very pragmatic view looking into the largeness of the amount and the quantum but if the amount is small this tax due could have its concomitant effect on stay applications